Hello, today I'm flying home on Air Canada in economy class. After spending some time in Seattle climbing mountains, it was time to go home. I did so on the airline everybody seems to hate, Air Canada. How bad was it? The day starts very early in an airport hotel. I checked myself out and boarded a shuttle bus to the airport. I don't know what route the bus took, so let's just say that it teleported. I wish I could teleport to Montreal too, but no, it's going to be a long flight. Our departure out of Seattle is right on time at 7.30 in the morning. We will fly 4.5 hours covering 2300 miles across North America to land in Montreal at 3 in the afternoon. Seattle airport certainly wasn't empty at 6 am in the morning, unlike Air Canada check-in desks which lacked Air Canada employees. It was just one desk, staffed by just one person, whom I think was a contractor. Not an issue at all, as there weren't many Air Canada passengers at this time, and even the priority line was still in effect for those in business class or those with status. I have Nexus, which grants me some perks when flying into or out of Canada and United States. One of them is TSA PreCheck. In my experience, PreCheck checkpoints are a few people long, never taking more than 5 minutes. This was not like that. This was the busiest pre-check checkpoint I have ever seen. Still though, it's better than the general line and I could keep my shoes on. I also learned that Clear is very powerful at this airport. The people who paid or had their credit cards pay the $200 membership fee just kept cutting the line. The United States government already has my fingerprints. I would love to give this private entity a scan of my retinas, but they don't want it because I'm not American. Through security now, the line was pretty bad for pre-check, but still not that bad. To the Amex Club. I would like to apologize for the hair you just saw. Can we pretend that the teleporting shuttle bus did not have a roof? To get access to the Centurion Club, all you need is the shiny Amex Platinum. Amex new Centurion Club in Seattle is awesome. I find that the vibe of this lounge is exceptional. Gorgeous bar, ample seating space, and a huge window overlooking the runways to gaze out of. I love it. The more usual lounge space with lounge chairs is available further from the entrance, but they're not my preference. I like lounges that don't look like airport lounges with just a bunch of lounge chairs littered around. I love it when they look like a bar, a restaurant, or a coffee shop. Speaking of, Amex put an actual little coffee shop here in the corner where you can order fancy coffees, smoothies, salads and some desserts. Although in the early morning it's just the fancy coffees. Do not worry though, this lounge puts out an amazing breakfast buffet for its patrons. This was truly the best breakfast I've ever had in a North American lounge. I got myself some french toast, which was perfect, the berries were fresh, the smoothie was delicious, and the orange juice, even at 6am, has alcohol in it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. When I first started getting access to these lounges, I wanted to show up to the airport as early as possible so I can take advantage and drink some alcohol. But now the excitement wore off, so... I still drink alcohol, just less excitingly. I lost my sense of time at the lounge, and so I had to walk to the gate with a little bit of haste. I also had to take a train to the satellite terminal that Air Canada flies out of, but I had no control of how fast that went. I made it to the gate just as zone 3 was cold, but being assigned zone 2, I was able to skip the line. I don't think there were many other zone 2 passengers, as I boarded into an almost empty plane. Slowly the plane filled up, but not my row, I had it all to myself. Right on time, the plane pushed back, and after a short taxi we were off to Montreal. To my disappointment, the weather was not good, and what I want to see the most 
Rainier Mountain was covered by clouds. This ship was kind of cute though. And you could see the bottom of the mountain here. But yeah, it was a very clouded ascent. But if you still want to see it, I will leave a link to the uncut footage in the description. The most important aspect of a flight experience, other than not dying, is the hard product. Let's have a tour. Like on most Air Canada planes, there are individual air nozzles for every seat along with a reading light as well. Moving on down, we have a screen. It's a 10 inch touchscreen display giving passengers access to plenty of entertainment options. We will look at those later. Below, still on the display unit, are I.O. ports. It has a headphone jack, USB-A and USB-C. Further below, exactly where you expect it, is a tray table. It's a decent size, but either way, I don't think the A220 flies a single route on which Air Canada serves a tray meal, but it will for sure fit the free drink Air Canada provides. Further below, there's a seat pocket. It's a very uncomplicated one. I wish it had some dividers. Inside of it is a safety card, bistro menu, and an air sickness bag. The legroom here is pretty good, I think. For reference, I'm six foot one. If you don't have a backpack in front of you, you can stretch out pretty far. In my opinion, the bottom of the seat is cushioned very well, however the back is a little hard. The seat also features an adjustable headrest, which I love and find so valuable on a long trip like this. Also the A220s have the widest seat in the fleet at 19 inches. Overall, I think it's a very comfortable economy seat. Now the disappointment, food and beverage service. The beverage service is the usual for North American Airlines, free soft drinks and alcohol is available for purchase. Porter does it better with free alcohol, but they're the exception and not the rule. What is crazy to me is Air Canada does not give out free snacks, no free snacks. The logical part of my brain is like, it's okay, I don't need the calorie anyways. The part of me that has feelings is so confused. Why? WestJet has snacks, Porter has snacks, Delta has snacks, I don't know. It just seems arrogant. I don't understand why the biggest airline in Canada must cut costs with snacks. Air Canada recently announced that they will be providing snacks and even alcoholic beverages on transborder flights. No doubt to match Porter's offerings. This is great. How they did it though is funny. It's only for flights within Canada and United States. If you fly to Mexico, where Porter does not operate yet, no snacks for you. Also, as of now, this policy is only until the end of 2024. Why? You buy a bunch of snacks that expire January 1st? Are you hoping Porter goes out of business then? What's going on? Anyways, moving on. I wasn't hungry on this flight, but I ordered a chicken wrap, which is usually pretty good when catered out of airline's hub airport. The plane we're on today spent the night in Seattle, and so the wrap was catered out of Seattle, and it was straight up disgusting. Big portion though, Big portion of an edible trash. Okay, let's go film the toilet. This is it. Big vanity mirror, below is a counter, the sink is a good size and the water pressure is good. On the right there is some usable space to put things down. Air Canada went with a higher density configuration compared to Delta and the lavatory size suffered a lot from it. To accommodate a passenger with reduced mobility, this wall can be enlarged to turn two lavatories into one big one. In Delta's planes, they have two larger restrooms and one of them has a window. With these planes flying five hour transcontinental routes every day, Entertainment is very important. Air Canada does a great job on this aspect. The interface is great, super easy to use. It has plenty of movies and TV shows available for your viewing. Those are also categorized, which is appreciated. On my previous trip with the airline, I watched a few episodes of White Lotus Season 1, I'm now done Season 2, and impatiently waiting for Season 3. 
The airline often changes what is offered on the IFE. You can check what is currently playing on entertainment.aircanada.com. There's also live TV available. Let's see what's playing on TSN. Hopefully it's Formula One. It's not. It's soccer. Oi. What is going on here? The most exhilarating entertainment, the moving map, is also available. I like the system a lot. It's very responsive, offers lots of information, and has a lot of different views. The only thing is, the engines are not running. Is that cause for concern? Did Boeing do this? One cool thing about this IFE system is you can play content on big screen and have a small map window on the side. That's what I did. I also got me an orange juice while staying far away from the food during the second round of service. And that's how I ended this flight. Perhaps I should have been writing the script instead of watching Curb. This flight was in October and today it's June. I'm writing this eight months later. I want to quickly say that the crew on this flight were great. They did their jobs perfect and they were very pleasant. I do wish the pilots climbed out of Seattle a little slower so I could capture more of Mount Rainier, but to be fair, they didn't know I was filming and also I'm not serious. In my past videos, I had long conclusions basically summarizing the whole video. I'm not going to do that anymore. I will keep it brief. Air Canada is fine. Their planes are good, they're configured similarly to their competitors, and majority of them have in-flight entertainment. That's all I really want from an airline's hard product on a North American route. Many Canadians use a motto to describe the airline. We are not happy until you're unhappy. Perhaps some of the decisions that the head office makes, makes the saying true. For example, I think it's insane that they are the leader in terms of not serving free snacks. I also think it's extremely sad that their on-time performance last year is at 63%. That is worse than Spirit and Frontier. Perhaps it's because of tightly scheduled turnaround times, lack of planes, or lack of pilots. These issues stem from the executives in the airline. However, the people I interact with, the airport staff, crews, even customer service, have always been nice and helpful. It's a shame that they're the ones who must face the dissatisfied customers. I still think Porter is the best airline. Their hard product is maybe a little bit better than the other airlines in North America, but their soft product is simply the best. Air Canada still needs to add free Wi-Fi to match them. I think if you can reach 50k status for Starlines Gold, and you can make use of it when flying internationally, it makes sense to favor Air Canada for your bookings. If not, I think it's best to book what works best for you based on price and schedule. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to make more, so you should subscribe. Thank you for watching.